Hey guys and welcome back to SV Blown Away. If you watched last week's episode, you'll be aware that we fitted our new instrument panel. In this week's episode, we are going to be fitting some of the components for our new autopilot. I say some because this project is dragging on. We are Natalie, Ian and Nelson. And we live a life less ordinary. And both you and I should be too shy about letting go for once. Come and be free with me. So, Ian's just taking that bracket off the mast up there. Well, generally, what we're doing is lowering it down to somewhere here so that the compass can go on it for the autopilot. I like restoring this boat, and I, I don't want to take it too far away from the original. And at some point, I'd really love to paint these masks again. To get them, like, they're anodised from new. Obviously, it's an anodising rather than paint. But we could repaint them. And I, I think I'd go back to the gold. It's faded like crazy, but yeah. it's 44 years old. It's bound to fade. Look at me. So this is our uh, compass bracket, the one we just taken down from off the mast. I have to adapt this to fit the new compass. This bracket is going to come in much lower down on the mast, which is why I've taken it off. So I do need to use this somehow. So what I could do is, if I chop this section off here, you maybe don't really I'd... need that bottom bit now. No, do you? you don't. There's no weight heavy. to it. The old compass was really heavy, and this one's not. Blown Away has a steel hull and steel frames. Now the problem being, if we mount this compass anywhere near the steel frames or near the steel hull, that metal will affect the compass, which is called compass deviation. And the problem with that is that if we dial in a course, the compass will lie to the autopilot and it will not steer the course that we are after. So the installation of this compass is very important to the operation of our new autopilot. The other thought process I've got is that we've got a wind generator at the mast. Now that wind generator, when it creates power, creates an electrical current yeah. in the cables up and down the, the mizzen mast. So the fact that this <coughs> is away from yeah. the mast, if I, <coughs> if I put it out there, the electrics here yeah. when the wind generator is on. Yeah, as if it's... <coughs> Whereas if I put that directly to the mast, yeah. the circuit of the um, the wind generator is a lot closer. Yeah. Okay. So not only do we need to keep this compass away from ferrous metals that will affect its operation, we also need to keep it away from electrical currents because electrical currents will cause magnetism, which will also deflect the compass and cause deviation, which will then affect the operation of the autopilot. There's more to this than meets the eye but this also measures pitch and yaw so the higher I have it up the greater the pitch the greater the yaw the more the autopilot has to correct yeah. so it's working overtime that's why they say to get these things closer to sea level which we can't do We, we knew it was going to be windy while we were here. Um, there's big wind due on Tuesday. Um, so we were putting out as much anchor chain as we possibly could. And unfortunately, our anchor chain is only that long. You can see it just under the water line there. You can see where our snubber line is attached to the end of our chain. And then we've extended our chain with our snubber tied off on the bollard. It's cheating. Just there. Otherwise, we would have had to have gone out and relayed the entire chain. Have you come to help, old man? Nelson! Nelson! Oi! Have you come to help? Did you come to help? Ian's just trying to make as much mess everywhere as possible. So, so far we've done the dock, the cockpit, the mizzen mast, the dinghy, 
and this isn't just a dinghy this is a pledge so my thought process <clears throat> I was thinking I was going to bend this up or down doesn't really make any difference and then mount the compass on this I need to bring this away from the mast. So this is the mast end, hence the curvature. If I mount this on the mast, it's too close to electrical interference because I've got a radar and um, other bits and pieces up the mast. So I want to bring it away so there's less electrical interference. I don't want to take it too far because then it's going to be swinging around like a crazy thing. So if I mount a block of wood on this, we've got some teak kicking around. I can mount this, but if I stick it on the end, this plastic bit is going to end up snapped off. If I bring it back to here, then I've got the protection of the bracket on this. That's my thoughts. Probably wrong, but we're going to try it. So what's your opinion? Will it work? Is it high enough? Is it far enough away from the electrical cables? Workshop extension. Um, measuring out some paint. Just making this connection as watertight as I can get it. And what is it you're dealing with there? Uh, this is the course compass for the new autopilot. <laughs> but this will also feed information to our radar, which will give it a uh, marpa capabilities. I'm going to mark this straight with the centre line of the boat, then this will be accurate. If not, somebody has to go up, undo these screws and just twist it around a little bit so it is adjustable. Let's take a watch. A watch? A watch. I need to take a watch of this stuff. Really How good. much is a watch? A watch is the correct amount. And then using it a bit like a grommet, so wrapping it around the cable. That cable now can't move in the mount. So it shouldn't chafe against any sort of rough edges or anything. It's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah. I think that'll work. I think that'll work. I think it's far enough away from the mouse that it won't have electrical interference. So using a bit of Gorilla Tape, we're going to hold the bracket in place, line it up with the center line of the vessel, and then I'm going to rivet this thing to the mast. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Hey everybody, I uh, hope you're enjoying the video so far. Oh yes, the important message. Um, we have 1,600 subscribers right now, which is absolutely amazing. Um, but we're being greedy, we'd like some more. And we know that there are a lot of you out there watching this video that haven't subscribed. Please click on subscribe, it helps us a great deal and it costs you nothing. It's for free. Thank you. We tied a fishing weight to a piece of small cord, dropped it down inside the mast, and then that hooks that piece of cord. We attach it to the cable and pull the cable through the mizzen mast. And there we go, NCC 1701 fully installed. And that cable, that cable runs down the mizzen mast, comes out through the deck, ends up down in that locker just there. And that is currently plugging in the extension cable that will bring it up inside of that locker, up inside of there, and connect to the network cables in the back of here. And with the compass in place, it's now time to concentrate on running wiring. I'm currently to that making up a loom, so I've got a piece of two core cable which will be the rudder feedback indicator, and I've got two heavy duty wires to carry 15 amps. Um, and these will be powering up the actual hydraulic ram for the autopilot. So the red. What's going on? Yeah. So this is the clutch for the autopilot, which comes with a very fiddly, very difficult to access plug. 
is plug off here. We're going to run the wire with a short cable that's easier to attach once it's inside the locker. Around. You've got to catch the look of confusion. <laughs> What's that? That's happened? not a lack of confusion. That is full confusion. <laughs> and that connects into there like so. RTFM. You hang on, you're a boy. Boys don't RTFM. RTFM. What does that stand for? for Read the flaming manual. Like it. This is where my problem comes in because I have to get the RAM more or less flat. It has to be horizontal from the quadrant so this end's got to be fixed to the steel hull of the boat and then this section goes to whatever you choose to put it to the quadrant or something but it's attaching it to that quadrant because we don't have the maximum length that we need is the ram plus the movement of the ram so i think this is going to have to go into the locker i don't i don't see it going any other way other than into the locker so basically what the old fella's saying is that the ram won't fit in the lower sections of the boat because the hull is rounded. There simply isn't space to fit it under the locker floors. So we've had to be a bit inventive. So as the hull rises, obviously the flare becomes greater and we can actually fit this ram higher up. It just means it's going to be inside of and visible in one of our lockers. It's the trouble with this system, or any of these systems, is there are so many options. So the book, you know, this isn't in different languages, this is all in English. But it's just, you know, which computer are you going to use, which control head are you going to use, are you going to add in, you know, remote, remote controls. controls, are you going to add in uh, other bits and pieces, and it, it kind of complicates it, it makes it more difficult. But hey ho. So you're more of a don't give you any kind of choice what do you want for dinner beans on toast kind of guy. Beans on toast all day every day. I don't want to scramble eggs on toast. That would be another option. I don't want any options. Keep it simple. Keep it simple stupid. Yeah. So we're going to take a red cable and poke it in that hole. We're going to take a black cable and poke it in that hole. And then we're going to run that to the back of the boat. Because we've got nothing else to connect it to. And why can't you do the internet research right now? Got no internet. We've got no welder, we've got no electrician, and now we've got no internet. How am I supposed to fix this? I'm not an electrician. Okay, my autopilot switch just there. And that's the cable that I found that goes to an autopilot, that one. But I'm, I can't trace it down the side of there. And it's one of these, maybe that one. Watch the voltmeter in a second. No, no, yep. Okay, so when I switch it on, that's my power supply to the computer. That one there. So we're going to connect that drag cable in yep. to that hole. And then the blue one is going to go on the bus bar for the earth. Okay. okay. So that now will feed power to the cable that I've already got going down here. For the Drifted off overnight. Crazy fool. Yeah. What are we doing? Where are we going? Uh, we're off to see the welder to make up a bracket to go on our tiller. For the autopilot. For the autopilot, because the autopilot ram won't fit under the cockpit floor, sadly. Uh, but it will fit in the cockpit. And we figure that the only place it will fit is on top of the emergency tiller square peg thing. Um, Sorry. And we don't have the materials to make it, so we are employing a professional to do some welding for us. 
should be good. So we're on our way to Poleros. Will this autopilot ever work? Join us next week. We, we might just have an answer for you. Our latest coffee donation came from SV Dream On. Thanks, guys. And we would like to say a great big thank you to our existing patrons, Matt and Michael. Thank you very much, guys. I want to I wanna put NCC 1701 around here. Well, I haven't faded at all. Sabretooth. It's really old, but it's good. Just keep sawing. My gags are wasted on you lot. No, you can't go in. Don't be a dick, dog.